Is there anything people want to know from this epic? There is a microphone in the middle of the house. No questions? We got any questions? I'll throw one out here. Okay, okay where are I? Oh, there you go. Okay. So, how did you get started? What was your involvement in the Karate Kid? How did you get started? How were you asking? Well, uh, asking? originally, um, if I remember correctly, uh, I had given John Appleson, the director, a photograph through my agent, and it was rejected. And then a friend of mine came over to the house and said, uh, came over for dinner, and he said, and he was very intense, and he played on Gunsmoke with me. The last year of Gunsmoke played my brother, an actor named Paul Coslo. And uh, he had told me, <laughs> here's the lady. And so, anyway, he said, um, they're looking for a guy a little bit bigger than me, and he was very intense, but very slim. And so I called my PR person, and he called the casting woman. And uh, she said, come in. And then I came in, and he really liked me, and he read, uh, gave me a script, and said, well, we'll see you in a week. And then all of a sudden, he called the next day. And I hadn't even looked at the piece. And he said, she says, uh, he wants to see you today at 12 o'clock. And I said, well, I haven't even looked at it. He said I had a whole week with the script. And it was the scene, Mercy for the Week, here on the streets, you know, up and down the dojo. And uh, I was really angry. And uh, I, I, my wife at the time told me, she says, well, use this anger and for the next couple of hours. And so I really, you know, just would preface the whole thing with, you're an asshole, John Allison, and all this stuff. And I would actually uh, went to the to the interview, and I was very angry because I had here I had three hours to do this this reading, and sure enough I just opened it up to get the energy going. You know you're you're an asshole, John. We wait for years to meet directors of your caliber. We fire our managers and fire our agents, and you know and now you know you give me three hours to learn this. You're an asshole, and so are you, Carol Jones. Mercy is for the week here on the streets. And I went right into the reading, because I got pumped, and he loved it. And I did the same thing with Jerry Weintraub, the producer, because he was four days late to the reading, and I abused him right there, and then used that to get into Mercy is for the Week again, and uh, ultimately got the part by abusing everybody. <laughs> Very good. This is my idol, Billy Zafka, by the way. My mentor. My mentor. Ditto, I had the same exact experience. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, uh, before these uh, Karate Kid movies, what type of martial arts training did you guys have to go through for the beginning of the, for the fight scenes and everything like that? Right. Um, well, I, uh, let's see, I, I didn't know any karate when I got the movie, which I didn't think I'd ever get the movie because I didn't know karate, I never rode a motorcycle. I was like the milk kid, I did all the commercials, so I was like kind of American boy, but I was like the farthest from Johnny Lawrence. So uh, I was a wrestler in high school, so I was really limber, but I actually had a wrestling accident in my senior, my junior year, and um, which got me into drama. So when I got Karate Kid, they kind of stretched me out and wanted to see if I could possibly, uh, everybody let me be Scott or Cobra Kai. Um, so uh, the training for me was um, five days a week, uh, four day, five days a week, four hours a day for three months, and we trained that final fight scene every single day. Ralph, I would train separately, then he would train Ralph, and then we'd come together. And um, you know, neither one of us knew martial arts, so um, it was kind of dangerous on the stuff we were doing. We had no stunt men doing our stuff, so they put pads on us, you know, with our hands, and we'd like, you know, punch three feet from each other's face until we got comfortable getting closer and closer. You know, we just did the same thing hour after hour, day after day, from the time we started rehearsal to the final fight, which was like the last thing we shot. What he's leaving out is he was really good. Oh, thank you. He really was. I mean, we really, we literally trained for six weeks. Yeah, yeah. And there was some folks that, you know, that, that take it naturally, some folks is a little harder. Billy was really good. He could kick his ass off. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, well, um, you know, the, my, my last interview, I think, was when we finished uh, rehearsals um, and the Jerry Weintraub and all the brass, Columbia Brass, came into the uh, studio. And I had to do this flying sidekick to Ralph where I had the, the Feds fight scene, you know, and I had to jump up and do this flying sidekick. And they had all these guys that looked like me that were black belts that were sitting there. And I kind of felt like that was my last audition. This was before we started filming there. And um, so I ran and I did the worst kick of all time. My foot was really sloppy. I felt like crap. I was really nervous. And then I looked at Pat Johnson, who trained me, and I said, you know, I, you know, I said, do it again, my son. Do it again, my son, you know. So I go back and do it again. And this time I jumped up and like just got really lucky and it was this like stupid drywall at, at Studio 15 on Columbia. My heel went through the pad and actually punched a hole in the drywall and the drywall exploded next to Ralph's head. So they pulled the pad down, there was a hole in the wall. And I was like a miracle that that happened. And then by the time that the stuff hit the ground, like everybody was clearing out and I guess they felt like I could do the part, you know. But I was nervous. That was like my last audition in my mind. Like, how many times? How many times? I did, I did two. My first one was a horrible leap, and the second one was a, like, you know, I don't know. Pat Johnson willed it on me, I think, and it was a disaster. But so, but the training was really intense, and it was really fun. And actually, the training is really what built in Johnny, because you know, when you're an actor, I didn't, you know, the, the physicality of this character was everything. So, you know, I had an amazing trainer, Pat Johnson, who was just, like, built Johnny into me. And, like, you know, if I did something wrong, if I turned my back on him, he'd sweep me. If I, you know, if I did something to disrespect me, maybe do push-ups on my left knuckles. And he taught me the difference in respect. And he would train me, like, a little bit like how Crease would have trained me in kind of hardcore. So he really, honestly, like, so much of the credit of, of who Johnny is is, is the, the, the genius behind the karate and the karate kid. You know, and he built that into me and gave me the confidence as a martial artist and the character and built it up over time. So that's what I have to say about that. Anybody else? Of course, you better go to the mic. It might be easier. We just got here, so I'm sorry if this has already been asked, but uh, the beginning of Karate Kid 2, uh, was that originally shot at the end of Karate Kid 1? I had heard an interview that, um, that that was originally, the beginning of 2 was the end of 1, and, did you actually get, did they bring you guys back just for the, the ending of two from the beginning? No, well, it was written as the end of the first script. And then I remember we were all um, waiting in the parking lot. It was a big decision, it was like three hours. And we had practiced punching the uh, window out and going over Miyagi's shoulder and, you know, and really working the whole deal out. And, uh, then, about three hours later, there was a decision between John Avelson and Jerry Weintraub to end the movie in the tournament and, and not end the film in the parking lot. So ultimately, two years later, in 1986, we started the movie in the parking lot as if it was a continuation from the end of the tournament. But it was really written as the ending of the first script post-tournament they, we both go out, and, you know, and I get violent with, with him. I think it was a good choice to end in the tournament. You know, it was a good choice to end up in, in, the, in the tournament. But there is a great story behind that also. I mean, the special effects guy, when I break the window in that scene, um, he uh, never blew the window properly. So he's supposed to line the bottom of the window with powder. But, uh, and then, like an inch, an inch before I hit the window over Miyagi, it, it would shatter, but it never did. And several takes, I hit the window and just snapped on the window, and it never blew right. You know, it just never blew right. So the special effects guy swore it would. And ultimately, of course, you know, the cameras rolled and all that, and I went. And thank God I didn't lunge punch. I just punched, because I didn't have faith in this guy. And sure enough, I went through the glass, and it never blew. And shards of glass were sticking in my hand and all that. And um, we had a break for a couple of hours, and they new skinned me and all that. And uh, and then we did it again, you know. And sure enough, I snapped and didn't, you know, go full force, and I hit the glass. But the glass didn't break this time. So I turned to John Avelson and I said, "This is not the Terminator's hand of Arnold." <laughs> This is, this is something we really need to adjust. So he called a wrap, and we just printed going into that glass, this real Marty Cove, going in the glass and breaking. Coming out, we, we, we did the next day, 
and covered me with blood. So um, it was a very arduous you know, experience because I could have really cut veins and stuff. But in essence, that that two years later we did that scene. I thought it, it went flawlessly from the end of uh, or the beginning of two. It, it really looks like it was almost shot then. So. Well, Billy gets choked well. Billy likes it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.